babies. It's me, 7K. And it's also me, Fantabuloso, you little shamrocks. And welcome to yet another video that isn't set in stone, episode <laughs> 10. This, hey, re remember like three years ago when I did an interview with Fantabuloso? This is uh, the, the update to it. Yeah. This is really, this is a really God, good. Has it really I, been three years? God, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Remember in that video, like, which was like released in what, like early spring, you said that you'd have the demo out <laughs> Listen. <for some, laughs> by the end of summer. Listen, Man. I, I got, and now it's, it, Feature and now Creep it's completely sucks. different. <laughs> Feature Creep Say sucks. What? Redoing projects sucks. Uh, yes. TFG now was something. <laughs> yeah. Now it's something completely different. Yep. So. Let's let's see. Uh, this this is this is starting off well. Um, <laughs> so uh, by the way, I'm not re-recording this no matter what. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be this is going to be a fun time. Oh boy, uh, yeah. No, we both have so, pretty tight schedules. So it sounds like so. The yeah. So the the very first thing I have written here is go over the history of LFG to TFG to Fantaria. Uh, so, uh, um, I can field this one if you want. And yes. then you can fill in any gaps since, you know, as a, as the author, so to speak, I'm likely to yes. skip over things. So basically LFG, uh, that uh, you guys know LFG to TFG, if you've watched that old video we were just talking about. And um, basically, I, I'm, I'm hoping that most people watching this haven't seen the original. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so uh, LFG was this uh, shit post in the egg like genre. I've talked about it actually on my channel. I have this big Q and A about Fantaria, so I'm just going to give you guys the lowdown, not to plug myself. But um, point is, uh, LFG was this egg like, and the egg like genre is essentially um, it's like sh like a shit post. It's shit posts, yeah. But there's more to it than just a shit post. There's sort of an art to it, since there's sort of three key components. It's got to be first person. You got to collect shit, and um, it's got to have this like surreal, low budget, um, copyright infringing atmosphere. Yeah. And yeah. you combine those three and then you have the egg like and LFG. It's also specifically like like a unity thing. Yeah, I've never like, seen. It's kind of like a parody of like really cheap asset flips on unity. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess just shovelware too. parodies of shovelware is a broader definition. Yeah, yeah. Um, point it. What I think. Sorry. It uh, made LFG specifically good is that it was not only like a parody of those things, but it was also parody of the the egg likes themselves. So if you're like into that like like irony squared type of thing, you know, it's pretty great in that in that aspect because like it starts off like r like really hard into the shit post stuff, and then as you go in, it slowly evolves into a real game. Exactly. Like, that's the whole thing with that. And then then you have TFG, which was supposed to be the, the next thing that would come after that, which was like, uh, okay, I, I don't even know how to explain <laughs> what TFG was supposed to be. So. Yeah, so TFG was sort of my evolution to it. I started it, I think, August 2015. That sounds right. Since, yeah, uh, like six months after, six months after the last update to LFG happened. So TFG, the fantabulous game in comparison to Lay Fantabulous Game, which again was just the ironic shitpost naming, the Fantabulous Game was a more serious take on the universe that was actually a third-person platformer combined with Dark Souls combat mechanics. So I sat there and I worked on that game until, oh, I'd say about April. It was April 2018. So here's about. a very important question. So you you got this this shitpost game, right? <laughs> Yeah. And you're like, I need, you know what this needs to be? <laughs> you know what I need to make this game into? I need to make a Rareware style 3D <laughs> collective on platformer with Dark Souls-esque <laughs> combat and like one unique mini game per world and have there be like 15 really big levels. Wow, that was, that, man, that was a really, that was a really interesting project. It was that ambitious, was the main to say the least. <laughs> Um, it was a, it was a really, it, that was really, that was a really, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, if I do ever come back to it, I do want to see those ideas to fruition. Um, the big thing I ended up cutting down near the end of TFG's dev cycle was, um, 
the number of levels, as you said. I, I decided to cut it down to about the length of what chapter one of Fantaria is going to be, but just in terms of like a level by level basis, since you were just going to kill the Shamrock King in TFG. Um, I, I Yeah, I cut out the other stuff, so. But then I decided, you know what, this is just too much. I've spent what, like four, no, three years almost at that point working on the first, <laughs> on level. The first level. Um, And though the mechanics were all there, they just weren't very fun. It felt like. And I'm actually planning on, after the Kickstarter's done one way or another, I'm planning on releasing the last build of um, TFG I ever made just so people can see it. Um, but I'm not doing I mean, that. it looked... Sorry? Some of the physics in that game looked pretty cool, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. There were, there were, like, a lot of good ideas. It was the combat itself that just wasn't really good. And I couldn't figure out a good way to make it good. The big problem I encountered, um, just since we should probably move on to Vantaria... Uh, yes. Um, the big problem I encountered at the end of TFG's dev cycle was, as I said, the feature creep, and it was just getting way too big. But even more than that, every boss idea and every enemy idea I came up with, um, when this case, the chosen one who is who features in Fantaria's demo, um, that I could only think of first person shooter bosses since, you know, it was based off of Lay Fantabulous game, a first person shooter. And every boss I came up with just wasn't friendly to melee mechanics. And I just, I couldn't get these boss ideas out of my system. So uh, when I combined that with the fact that it was just taking so long and I had spent three years on the first level, um, and the fact that as a fresh developer, you can't really expect to make, you know, $500,000 on your first Kickstarter or whatever, I was like, okay, listen, let me just... Uh, uh, Pare this down a little Exa bit. <laughs> well, no, let me rework this entire idea and go back to the first person shooter so I can get these concepts out of my system. Um, and thus, uh, technically, it was originally called Lay Fantabulous Game version 1.0 was born. Um, and right here at the 10 minute mark, here's the real meat of it. None of the games, <laughs> none of the games I've made since Lay Fantabulous Game have been egg likes, and this is some this is a misconception that I encountered a lot, which is what eventually led into Lay Fantabulous Game version 1.0 being renamed into Fantaria: The Quest for Sausage, wh whose Kickstarter at the time of this recording has uh, about a week left. Um, so, Fantaria is a first-person shooter. Um, combined with a collectathon. And as far as I can tell, it's the first time those two genres have been combined. And, uh, you know, not to boast, but I feel like in those aspects, I've done a You're very a good job. <laughs> so, um, yes. Yeah, the, like, so the big problem with collectathons, right, is that the collectibles just stop mattering. You just need them as keys to open doors. But in Fantario, you instead use them to upgrade your skills and guns and yada yada. Um, on top of that, there are still platformer, like, elements like there's there's platforming but none of it's too too intensive especially compared to the original lay fantabulous game with uh signville uh, so uh, or the uh, or the flipping eggs uh, <laughs> yeah that was that was a good time <laughs> i was 16 you should, look you should you should bring them back in secret area that's you, you should you should make secret areas that are like this the original shitty versions of each of the areas that existed in the original one or something like that. That'd be cool. Oh, no. Um the only problem would be fighty place since it's a very big level even in version 0.9. Um point is though that's what Fantaria is. Um so it's sort of like you were saying 7K or I, I assume that's how that's how I know you as 7K. It's sort of that continued evolution from that really shitty shit post into, you know, this kind of weird, kind of goofy uh, 3D platformer hybrid. Yeah, it's like a much more natural evolution of uh, of the original, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what I was going to say is Fantaria then takes that stuff that TFG did and just sort of continues expanding on it, continues making it a more natural game now a lot of that stuff is more behind the scenes at this point which i think is what causes a lot of people to have this misconception that it's just another egg like because you're still collecting sausages there's still shamrocks yada yada but there's like actual lore now and that's that's part of you know that's reflected in the name change that it's now fantaria it's not ooh the fantabulous game it doesn't break the fourth wall in its own title it's like it's its own thing uh, so question number four that I have written down here is, uh, why did you remove spinny wheel legs? That's an important question. <laughs> oh that my was the God. Best part. That was the best feature. That's the, that's the, why did you nerf Catboy? 
<laughs> well, basically, it's just because, uh, I mean, like I was just saying, um, Fantari is uh, sort of more serious. I kind of took all the, like, wacky, meme stuff, and instead of having it be wacky and meme I made it, like, kind of, like, subliminally creepy. And that's where the whole subliminal horror comes in in the uh, tagline for the game. It's not the only place, but... Subliminal... Sub... Sub... <laughs> subliminal horror is the quest for sausage <laughs> yep basically so whenever 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 someone says the quest for sausage uh, a, a a shiver runs down my spine and, <laughs> and i start thinking about how someday i'm going to die <laughs> i mean yeah, I mean, yeah that's basically I, 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 I understand what you mean yeah <laughs> so um, so, but that's the reason for the wheel legs. Uh, since I kind of sat down and thought, like, what is a creepy version of these wheel legs? Oh, a spider. That's like, it's the same sort of concept of, like, something they can just, like, scuttle around. Okay, so the next thing I have to say is, um, so, so it's, so the, the game is, 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 you know, uh, shifting away from the whole meme thing. But how about, is there still going to be... Like, obviously, the game is called Fantaria Quest for the Sausage. So, yeah. I mean, the game shouldn't take itself 100% seriously, right? Oh, definitely not. I mean, um, no. Okay. There's still going to be humor I, and everything. It just Yeah, exactly. That's I've seen a lot of people have that concern that because you're not going to have, like, billboarded, like, memes <laughs> that you found on Google Images... <laughs> that the game is going to be super serious now. That's not even what the funny parts of the game were originally anyway. Like yeah. the, the funny stuff was was the shamrocks and the way that like it it, it played with expectations and shit. Exactly. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I'd say a good sort of barometer for the sense of humor is really version 0.9 was the first step in this evolution to a more normal game. And you can look at the content I made in the original version 0.8 and version 0.9, and you can see a pretty stark difference in the type of humor. Um, Since specifically the levels that were added in version 0.9 were the prison and the Shamrock Palace. And I'm thinking about, I don't think I put a single like meme shitpost in either of those. Unless if you count the uh, strip club. Right, but stuff like the strip club, that's what I'm saying. Stuff like that type of thing will still happen. Yeah. Like that that style of humor is still planned for the game. It's just I'm not so, going to put in, you know, the Freddy got fingered sound clip or <laughs> or a, or a screen cap from a Shrek content aware scale gif or uh or or have like the 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 Donkey Kong oh yeah for the save. Yeah, exactly. So that answers my question of will there be any wacky shenanigans? And uh, there will be. Long story short. Okay. So, or will the wacky shenanigans be relegated to just like little things that you find in the world, or will will they be implemented into what the quest itself will be? Will there be any will will any hmm. hijinks ensue in in your quest to find sausage? That's a good question, and um, I think it's one I haven't thought about a whole lot yet, just because the first level doesn't really entail any wacky shenanigans since you're just sort of storming a mountain base. But the second level, the adaptation of the prison, um, is going to be a actually a prison resort hybrid. So the idea is the Shamrocks have this whole like tropical resort all built around Balcatraz, their like high security military prison. So I, I, th- I can definitely see some shenanigans happening with that. One thing I've considered is like making the player like cause shenanigans and then they get arrested and that's how they get into the prison to continue onwards to the shamrock castle something Mm. along those lines so point is i i would like to implement you know that type of humor into the main quest but if it doesn't make it into like the main like required events itself it definitely won't be very far off the beaten track okay so i think that that uh that that transitions into another question that i have here which is um how will the other levels be different? Because right now the demo is of uh, World Three, no World One, Level Three, right? Yep. Which is more linear with these little side secret paths, right? And you said that it's still going to be a little bit more of a open thing, right? Yes, definitely. No, it's the. Uh, um... For example, this was actually an idea you suggested to me way back, way back when, but um, in 1-1, since this is 1-3, 
uh, 1-1, I've decided that the whole idea of like you have to go and kill one of each of the sort of shamrock elites of each of the main types. So in this case, there's four now. Um, Cannoneer, Rammer, uh, Knight, and Blaster. You have to nice. kill an elite version of each of them to get keys to open the gate into the um, into the actual tower where you'll then go through 1-2 and then finally end up in 1-3. And both 1-1 one, one and 1-2 one, are going to be much less linear than 1-3 is. 1-1, um, one, one, well, it's... I guess it... Sorry. If it's like a collectathon, if we think back to Super Mario 64, right? Uh, how each section of the castle had about three or four, maybe five open levels, right? Yep. Much smaller than what's in here because it's like the first 3D game ever. Right. <laughs> right. And then... Uh, then they would cap that off with the Bowser areas, which were more linear and would lead to you getting a, a key that would lead to the next world, quote unquote world, which would be a section of the castle, right? Yeah. So is that comparable? Like, would each of the final area of each world be more linear than uh, than the other two? I'd say that that's a probably... Um... I'd say that's probably a pretty decent wager. I can't say for sure. Um, especially uh, thinking about chapter one, um, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Mm. That's what. That's just what came to my mind. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously, I think that the reason why this one is more linear is because it's what you're making for the demo and you want to make it a little bit more contained. Exactly. And e right, because you've been doing this for what now? Almost a decade, <laughs> and, and you've been just doing this on your own time. So, and, and you got to get this out as like a proof of concept. So obviously it's going to be a little bit more contained. It still has plenty of secrets and side areas and stuff. And I think that uh, getting a good uh, balance between open areas and more linear, like one thing after the other areas for like these areas, uh, final it is a good flow right? yeah exactly like if that's if that's how it would be that would be like about two-thirds open one-third more linear I'd, I'd say that's a pretty good uh estimate for how the overall game will play um since I, I do feel like some linear levels are necessary to sort of keep the player's attention and keep their flow um yes. in in the full version however i do think i'm gonna go back to one three and it's, it's tricky since, you know, it's an exterior mountain ascent. There's It's kind of hard to make going up not linear. Mm -hmm. But I would like to investigate options. Maybe, like, adding... Maybe making the fort span around the entire mountain and having some secrets there or some sort of cave system. Um, yeah. Everything in the demo I mean, is still very unfinished and unpolished, including the level design itself. This is, like you said, mm -hmm. it's basically a proof of concept. That, that vine section, man. <laughs> That I, I think I remember the first thing that I told you about the game was how annoying, how I hate those Vine enemies. They suck. <laughs> and they've been nerfed hard. And they still suck. They, see, I actually noticed um, recently while I was testing, and I haven't had a chance to fix it since I've been tracking down this awful memory leak issue. Mm -hmm. um, they have a glitch where their head itself, not only does it like knock Catboy back, but... It also yes. it also physically pushes him since the head itself I left a solid collider in the head, so they're actually able to whap Catboy, which with friction changes, just send him <laughs> flying. So their knockback isn't meant to be this intense. I think that actually happened to me yeah. while I was playing the game. It was yeah. Also, you know, I noticed a pipe. Uh, well, whenever I jumped onto the vine, mm -hmm. is that where Goobert is going to be? That's an important <laughs> question. I think um, that. That's what my thought was. I was like, oh, that must be where Goobert is supposed to be. Actually, it's it's funny you mentioned Goobert in relation to that pipe, because um, I, I don't remember if I've just hidden them or if I'd lead them entirely. There's actually supposed to be a bunch of ooze flowing out of that pipe down the mountain. But um, like a couple days before release, I just I couldn't get the effect looking right. So I decided just screw it. It's just an empty pipe and they'll pump ooze out of it later. So that would be a good place to put Goobert. As it stands, he's just kind of on the main path to be like, hey, this is a this is a Barkwurst. Pick him up. Well, yeah, I figured <laughs> that he would have to be put there because, like, you got to introduce the concept. First. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, I, what I was saying is that there's plenty of secret, like, side paths and shit. So maybe in the final one, if you want to make this one more open, you could have it more or less be the same, but have, like, alternate you know, like an alternate path, like some type of like a, like shortcuts, like have like that, that one where you 
we're like right before like the third area before you get into the tower to go up you know what i'm talking yeah. about like where the vines grabbed it yeah and uh and you can go off and then there's like the area with the boxes you could probably have something out behind there and have like an alternate entrance like you can that's have true like, i like that idea you could have like al- alternate entrances to the uh thing if you want to go for a more open thing yeah I, th- I think that's probably very similar to the route i'll end up taking it, um when i go back and give one dash three another uh pass through i think it's perfectly that what's there is perfectly fine for for like the proof of concept oh definitely and it's got like i mean most of the most of the combat is pretty tight you know mm-hmm. um when I when I say tight, I mean like literally tight, not like <laughs> I'm not using like the no, oh, yeah, I got gotcha. you tight, but it's also pretty tight in that sense too. So, I mean, you okay? okay I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, oh, speaking of combat, uh, uh, what what different weapons can we expect to see? How will we come across them? Yeah, so um, coming across the weapons is something I'm still hashing out entirely. Uh, what I know for sure is at the point in the demo, or at 1-3, you will have all the weapons Catboy has in 1-3. So you'll have blue and red. Um, and the current plan is uh, in 1-1, you'll there will be a little section where the Shamrocks are attacking a Sphere Friend Fort. And you can see that like um, a bunch of the vines got frozen and there's some Shamrocks frozen in the ice. So you go in, you fight, I think it's the Knight Elite. And then you go through a door and Sphere Friend Blue's right there. And the tricky thing is I do want to find a way to guarantee the player has every Sphere Friend when they're supposed to. Um, Uh So then you'll probably have to use Sphere Friend Blue. Well, currently you have to... Actually, yeah, I'll just reuse the fans probably and say you have to freeze a fan to get further into 1-2. In terms of acquiring the weapons, you'll just bump into them and they'll be shortly before, you know, required checkpoints where you have to have them. So you'll solve some little puzzle or do a combat challenge. Then you'll get the weapon. Um, As for the remaining weapons, uh, what I can say for sure is their elements. There's going to be a flame one, an ice one, a poison one, and a charm one. So obviously the first three are pretty self-explanatory, but the charm one is going to let you, you know, it'll build up a condition on enemies, which will then make them fight alongside you. Which one's one's the charm one? Uh, That'll be your color. Uh, Pink. Oh, I thought that one was supposed to be the electric one. No, uh, uh... I can't remember what I've named them because I, I've messed with the naming system because Indigo and Violet in reality are really close to each other. I think I, Sphere Friend Violet or Sphere Friend Purple, whichever they are, they're going to be the uh, Electro Shotgun one. Ah, so, that's the best one. Yeah. No, I, that's the one I'm that's... personally most excited for because I love shotguns in first-person shooters. But, but isn't it like 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 the Spark thing in Kirby as well? Um, Is it that what you said? Like you said that like... Like you move around that's a, and build up static in it. That's something I was considering. I actually forgot about that until you brought it up. It's in my design doc still, of course. So whenever I got to the weapon, I'd have remembered. But I would like to do bruh. something like that. Um, bruh. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, bruh, that'd be that'd be dope. Yeah. Something, it, it's tricky because originally the weapons were all designed with alt modes in mind, but it would just, that's essentially doubles how many weapons I have to make as a one-man team. So mm. to keep, again, Speaking to keep scope of- in check, I toned it down. Oh, speaking of alt modes, I th- th- naturally the next thing to talk about is, is chapter two, the eggs, because the egg alt things. Right. Yeah. So um, one thing that uh, in the event chapter two gets funded with, you know, seven days mm-hmm. on the clock, it's not super likely, but who knows? We could get picked up by some huge streamer. Um, oh, yes, definitely. Like me. <laughs> point is... Uh, those alt modes I mentioned that I cut for the first chapter will be presented as the eggling weapons in chapter two. And I don't have all of them planned out right now, but what I can say for sur- sure in- is um, eggling blue instead of sweet friend blue. Um, they'll have a railgun and a massive ice laser to counterpart the um, SMG and tiny ice laser of sweet friend blue. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me see. And then there's the, the, the third thing. So there's three chapters yeah maybe if if they get funded and i i would like to i'm planning and hoping to be able to make the chapters even in the event that they don't get funded i would like to use the Mm. profits from chapter one to make chapter two and then use those profits to make chapter three um the funding goals were just a guarantee that i would be able to make them so 
then, then there's going to be like some like fourth mini chapter if you know yeah along with chapter three it'll be uh the fourth mini chapter is mostly just the finale to the overarching plot the way i've put it it, it sounds um it uh, one person on the kickstarter actually accused me of ransoming the um ransoming chapters two and three behind stretch goals but in reality, each chapter is its own self-contained story, and they all weave together to form a larger overarching one. Uh, not to say yeah. that the you know tone or even quality of the story is necessarily on par with it, but uh, it's a very similar structure to you know Star Wars episodes four, five, six. Each episode has its own plot, its own you know rising and falling beats, but they all three combine to tell a total story. So what you're saying is that this is the next Star Wars? Exactly. Huh? I'm the next George Lucas. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh god! No! <laughs> you're gonna have to go back and and like you're gonna have to go back and you know clean up the original uh, <laughs> LFG, even though you lost all the files. Exactly. Um. So yeah, the there's you know technically four chapters. Calling the fourth chapter a fourth chapter is kind of you know I I always hate it when games do that when they have like one level but it's chapter four. It's more of chapter finale if in the event mm -hmm. that it actually happens and it will happen if chapter three happens so okay so at this point i've completely all we're i i completely went out of order from the, the questions <laughs> i had planned so um so um so let me see what have i not asked yet so we got this and then okay so so the demo has gone through a couple updates since its initial release yeah. Uh, what changes, what, what was the original like uh, in comparison to what it's like now and what other changes can we expect to see in the future? Yeah, so um, the original demo which came out, uh, well, first of all, versions uh, 1.1 and 1.2, uh, they were mostly just bug fixes. Um, bug fixes, a little bit of balancing here and there. So there's not much to talk about with them. Um, version 1.3... I think it was version 1.3. I, I, I don't have the chronology all in my head right now. It was a very, very hectic couple of weeks there around the launch of the Kickstarter. Um, but uh, the big changes overall since the demo's inception were um, Catboy has more air control now, which means everyone who was really upset about the you know, platforming and how uh, those who felt that the platforming was floaty, um, they should be... It's not floaty anymore, just fundamentally. It's a lot tighter, um, easier to control, Catboy, etc. Ammo on all the weapons regenerates now, which is a step that I had been considering and decided to actually go through with uh, once I got feedback from the wider community. Um, so every, yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, every weapon's going to have different ammo regen rates to sort of balance, mm -hmm. you know, their strength. Since obviously Sphere Friend Red, if it's up every, you know, five seconds, is just the <laughs> best weapon. Um, <laughs> yep. So... Uh, it's gonna it's gonna add some extra balancing overhead across all the weapons, but I, I think it's important, especially if you t take a look at it from all three chapters, to have a nice like roster of baseline weapons that you can always fall back on. So then that gives yes. me the ability to have, say, the Eggling weapons. Maybe you have to reload them, or maybe they have maybe they don't regenerate their uh, ammunition. And then for chapter three's weapon set, which isn't going to be sign related, but just random weapons, you know, it's just going to be where I put cool weapon ideas that aren't tied to a specific entity. Um, like a fire sword. Well, not a fire sword, but like some sort of magical tome or... Uh, or a fire sword. Or a fire sword, sure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the ammo regen is another big change. And I'd say the last big change was um, the addition of difficulty mode. So people who find the demo mm -hmm. too difficult or too easy can now adjust the difficulty. I've never been a fan of those whole like... I might have even said it in the first interview we did. I, I hate the idea of setting difficulty modes and, like, toning down the difficulty just by, like, ooh, you deal more damage and enemies deal less. But it, it works at the end of the day. And as long as I make mm. it clear what the intended difficulty is, it doesn't do any harm. I, just, I, I feel lazy as a developer for doing it and would rather do it in a more in-depth way. But, you know, you can't argue with results, I guess. Oh, and sorry, the last change, um, which I think is very important to point out, is massive performance improvements across the board. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. That, that's that been the, probably the biggest thing. Like, just stability and performance have greatly improved since the initial uh, Kickstarter release. Um, there's always room for more optimization. Exactly. And there's still room for plenty more. Right now, I'm sort of trying to track down, I mentioned it earlier in this uh, video, 
I'm trying to track down this memory leak issue where after like an hour of gameplay, the mouse just starts lagging whenever you move it. Um, as far as I've been able to determine, it's something in the Unity backend, so I need to figure out how to replicate it and submit a bug report to them. Um, but until then, you can either use a controller or just restart the demo if it happens to you. I've mitigated it for sure by updating Unity, so instead of happening after like 45 minutes now, it happens after like two hours, so. Oh, okay. But what if I want to just leave it there for two hours? You, know? <laughs> you gotta. I gotta. About, I gotta think about every you gotta player. Be, you, you gotta. You, you lost touch with the gamer. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I, I need to get that idle As, game market. It's so big on mobile. <laughs> Man, that's that's how I like to play my games. <laughs> not doing anything. Exactly. You know that's why that's why I watch so many streams and let's play. <laughs> that's how I like to play my games. Hey, you know, for some games it works. You don't have to pay for it, and you get if you if you care about the story, nothing wrong with it. But yeah, and you know, with this game, you know, I I care very deeply about <laughs> the the lore hey, of, of this of this universe. Hey, now you will you you shouldn't yet because there's nothing there to care about yet. But you will. <laughs> I can promise you that. Oh, oh yeah, you I you promise me. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay we'll see about that. Okay. I care. I, I, I actually, I don't care at all. That's why I haven't uh, contributed anything to your Kickstarter. <laughs> oh yeah, not at all. Yeah, I, I've not. I haven't. I haven't. I have definitely not contributed <laughs> even a single dollar. Not one penny, you bastard. No. Um. <laughs> anyway, though, uh, uh, do you have any other questions? Speaking <laughs> of the Kickstarter. All oh, right. Yeah, we. I, I'm, I'm on a roll, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? How about that Kickstarter and the reward tiers? Um. Well, what about them? I can't. I mean, I can't discuss any backer information without backers well, allowing backer me to. I'm talking about like what are the reward? Oh, tiers? oh, just the reward tiers themselves. Um. Yes. My bad. Like, sorry. What? What? What, what do you? Th did you want me to think that? Dude, I th to go I, list off whoever was there and start listing off everyone's reward. You just said the rewards. I had I, that's just where my mind went. Um but yeah, the rewards. So basically, uh one thing I did with rewards since I don't I don't have the means to do physical rewards is all the rewards are digital and um they start off with just like, oh, get your name in the credits, then get the chapter 1 when it releases. Get all the chapters and any DLC and the soundtrack when they release. Uh when slash if they release. Uh but then from there you can design a sphere friend NPC who will like wear a hat and maybe have a little tool I, I said headwear in the Kickstarter, but like when I when I'm working things out with the backers, it'll it, the it's everything's sort of it, nothing's strict and set in stone, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and then well, oh, set in stone like oh, my series. Hey, um, hey. But yeah, so Man. from there, then you can design a bark worst, and they're the sort of like little Jinjo inspired creatures you can collect in the levels, uh, cute little dog fellas. Um, moving on, there's one to at I think I, it's at 120. Uh, that you can design both, or no, uh, Bark Worst is 120, 150 is you can design both a Sphere Friend and a Bark Worst. 300, you get to sort of design your own custom NPC, uh, subject to my, and the team's approval, of course. Uh, but you get to design a NPC along with the Bark Worst and Sphere Friend. And then finally, at the highest tier, $600, um, you get to design a boss. What idiot would, would, uh, <laughs> contribute that much? That's, Quite a few, that actually. Really I'm so su I'm surprised how popular that tier's been. Um, and I've, I've worked with a couple of people, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with all the other people who have you know backed that tier. Uh, but so far, everyone who I've worked with with the NPCs, I was honestly afraid since you know there's those there's Kickstarter horror stories of how you know you'll get a backer <laughs> who's very demanding and very uh, they want their idea realized at any cost, but to both themselves and to the product itself but um i want my oc in there. <laughs> hey man can hey uh if i uh contribute to the npc can you put in uh lisa simpson into your game? <laughs> just lisa oh god uh, but what I, what i was gonna say is oh my lord <laughs> um what i was gonna say is i it has been an absolute pleasure working with every single um you know design and x backer who i've worked with so far and i've been very pleasantly surprised by how smooth everything's gone. So okay, so my next one is spring one of my designs on him. Lisa Simpson doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, let me see, because I, I I lied. I, I I have disclosed a certain amount of money that may not. 
that may, that may be something that I said would be a dumb amount to, to, to uh, put in. <laughs> well, now you've said it, um, so. So, uh, let's see. Uh, so, how about sphere dudes? So, in the original, they had the, those the, the the sphere the sphere dogs were the little, like they they just looked like sphere friends, but they were blue and they just rolled around and said. Warf. Bark, bark, I, borf, borf. Right? <laughs> I think it was warf, warf, I am dog or something. I am dog. See, whenever I originally played the game, I I never thought that they were supposed to be like actual dogs. <laughs> I thought they were supposed to be like like little kids, sphere friends that were ah. pretending to be dogs. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. Like, I thought, oh, that's cute. What if in, in one of the levels, you just, you hear like a bark. But it's like infused with a ba. Oh God! Like combined. And then, like, you're like, Wait, that doesn't so- that doesn't sound right. And then you go, and then like you see, it's like a little blue sphere friend, and he's got some like maybe he's got like a, one of those like furry headband ear things. <laughs> and he and it does it it contributes absolutely nothing. It's just there. <laughs> I, well, I figured since you were okay. I mean, it's not a boss, but um, I, I like that idea. <laughs> I'm, I am actually bringing back. <laughs> I am bringing back the sphere friends, or sorry, the sphere dogs themselves. Since now that, since sphere dogs were redesigned into being more canine esque, and then those more canine esque versions were renamed into barkworsts, so now there's this sphere dog niche that needs to get refilled. So they're the just tiny sphere do- sphere friends who say they're dogs are probably coming back. Oh, okay. Well, I guess, I guess I just my 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 idea is not there anymore. <laughs> I don't know what I would do now. Oh God. I, okay, so Sphere Dogs, uh, let's see, see, I, I remember during the stream, I gave you a dump of like 30, at one point I gave you a dump of 30 different Sphere Dog ideas, I think, right? Uh, you remember that? Mainly because- I think so, yeah. I think, I think my brain is very obsessed with anything that's like, uh, like a, a bunch of different individual unique things that- to me, like uh, it's really important that things like this are are have reach their maximum. Like I don't know exact that they've been iterated upon in the uh, to their completion. I guess if that makes any sense. Um, I think so. Like, like to every me, idea, like, you want to make like, sure every idea is explored in a situation like, like this, right? Like I feel like it needs to like th- that like. Within the amount, the number that you have, you need to e- explore its conceptual depth. I guess. Yeah, I see like what how you're many saying. Different things can happen. Like I could, I could get it all video essay ish because I do have, I do plan on making <laughs> some something in the future about my theory on on fe- uh, on phases of iteration. But let's let's not let's not let, let's not do that. Uh, <laughs> basically. The, the, the issue that I run in with that is that as someone who's going to be giving a design, like a lot of the designs I had are just things that I think should exist. Right. Right. Like I said, there should be one called hot dog that's fire related and one named chili dog that's ice related. Right. I remember that. I'm not, I do, yeah. Like I don't want to actually suggest that because that's a waste and should exist anyway. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yes. And there should also be one that has... Uh, Cat Boy's original spinny legs. That'd be cool. That should just be there. I, I, no that, one has that suggested should, that one. That should just be there. Yeah. <laughs> it should. It should be just naturally there, based upon like, like, the fact that like just what it is. Right. Right. So I don't want to suggest that. <laughs> well, um, the thing is, I suggested. Sorry. Um. The thing is, uh, with, you know, with a bark wars, it how many ones that should be there kind of come down to how many ones are backed. Um, and I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I do know the, the uh, there, there's a decent chunk of people. There's not enough to fill up the entire, you know, in all of chapter one of, you know, exactly. Bark Wars backers. So I'm just, I'm just going through like, what, what, like what would, what, what I'm going to land on. Right. Right. You know? So like, because I don't want to suggest something that should already be there. Right. Yeah. I gotcha. Um, so another one that I suggested was this is probably the best one that I'm not going to suggest was the dog incognito because you see the the uh, the uh, silhouettes 
in the thing. Right. So what if there was one that was just a silhouette? I like so that, that a lot. Same? That that's actually really good. I feel like stuff like the really surreal ones should be in. Like I feel like uh like it should be themed like the the one in uh the ones in the Shamrock uh chapter should be more vanilla. Yep. Than in uh egg, it should be like some of the more surreal fourth wally like a low poly dog yeah and- or a wireframe dog or a dog with a human face <laughs> um and then chapter three know, is going to be the creepier ones obviously like yeah. a dog that's been turned inside out right um that was another thing that i suggested that i was thinking <laughs> about suggesting is that i wanted what if there was a dog that breathed the, the fog that turns you inside out oh god and he j- he's just completely weak and can't move and is screaming <laughs> god he's in a he's in a puddle of his own bile jesus christ i mean backer backer npcs when it comes to the sphere dogs are pretty pretty much sky's the limit as long as they maintain the basic rules i outlined in the kickstarter i remembered here's but, but like i wanted to be something that wouldn't ever be there if i didn't suggest it right, right? so and then i remembered Oh, I could probably relate it back to something on this channel, right? Yeah. My original series that I had on this channel was a parody of, like, the Slender Vlog format. Yeah, I know about Uh, those videos. Oh, you've seen the uh, Proof That X is Evil? I I remember you showing it to me back back in the day, but I meant more I know about the uh, the Slender Vlog stuff. Oh, oh no. I showed you those videos? Oh, no. That's terrible. Why did I do that? (laughs) why do i want to show you those videos they're terrible i hate them i I, i'm pretty sure you did i think it's in the skype vlogs somewhere oh no i think i think i'm i may have sent you some of the just to be like oh look i can edit yeah i sent you some some of them like i i don't think i actually i remember i showed you my 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 geo cities page i remember that yeah (laughs) with the (laughs) oh my god with the secret lisa (laughs) page I'm trying to I'm, remember I'm, that. I'm that it's, a secret. <laughs> it's a secret to everyone. Okay. Okay, it's a secret to everyone. No one can know about it <laughs> except for you. Oh God. Uh anyway. So Lisa Simpson's going to be in your. Oh my God. Are you making a? <laughs> That's my dog. You're going to make a Lisa Simpson dog? <laughs> no. Okay. Anyway, so in in maybe. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Any, anyway. Anyway, my um. Origi- so anyway, the original series uh, was uh, essentially it was like the Slender Vlog format, yep. except for instead of the Slender Man, it was my dog Paco. Ah, gotcha. A little Chihuahua. And he's, he, I feel like maybe you could do something with like a dog in the Signville area where he's like possessed by sign or something. Yeah. And like, you could have it be like, like a weird instance where like, he, he looks maybe like you could take the I, I like how both of my ideas re, uh, re, revolve around altering the sound of the bark slightly. <laughs> but like, what if it sound a little bit crushed? Um, and then like and then you come up to it and it looks like a normal dog, but like it's just sitting there completely still. But like you just you can still hear the bark, even though like it's not opening its mouth. Mm hmm. And it's looking kind of downward, and as you get closer to it, it just suddenly its head snaps towards you, and its eyes turn black. Oh God! I mean, that's that's easily doable. Sounds good to me. Um, okay. The only potential then, issue would be the bit crushed bark, but as long as it's not modified too much, like as long as it's still recognizable as a bark wrist, that's the important yes. thing. And then you uh, you can collect them, and it says perhaps his 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 uh, character bio could be in. Uh, binary or something oh god <laughs> yes he says okay so for some like it's expert through whatever his name <laughs> a cap is says, a cap pursue yep okay so he says something like for some reason i i feel like saying one one zero one 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 zero zero one 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 you just keep on it just completely fills up the screen oh so, god um no um so so far as boss I, i'll just tell you about that later i don't want to I, I've had enough. This this is taken up too. Yeah, so, we're pushing on. Hey an hour. guys, <laughs> hey guys, hey guys, watching this. Hey, is isn't isn't it fun to think of dog thing? You could do that too if you give money. I I did a good job. 
<laughs> yeah, so point I is, did it. like, you saw how smooth that negotiation went, I guess. I didn't know that was happening. Um, yeah, but that was, so- that's why I did it. <laughs> I wanted to show them what types of things... Maybe you can put in a Lisa Simpson. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe you can put in the, the, like, the entire the, Simpsons the, the, family will be the bark worse than one level. <laughs> hey, that could that could work if it if it's as if it's um if it's um bootlegged enough. Yeah, no, well, I mean that, it could. That, if five please, people negotiate please, and give me please, what is that 600 bucks please. to get the simpsons this, family in <laughs> guys we could do it as, we could do it guys as long as they're not infringing the barkworths really are very guys let's 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 do this <laughs> they're very sky's the limit so yes, if you're interested exactly. in that i assume you'll have edited a barkworth on screen at some point if not you should do it yes. now um if you're interested in designing one of them get in touch back the kickstarter yada yada yeah guys let's get let's let's get lisa simpson in the game <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> what, what's so the next question is what's the plan of action if this doesn't work out right so if the kickstarter um does not succeed the plan is actually um i currently do have a patreon i do not advertise it very much since i want you know the focus to be on the kickstarter but um the plan is basically to actually go and start advertising that Patreon and just, you know, depending on how successful that is, work on the game part time or full time um, or in my free time. All three are options. And uh, then, of course, you're going to have to put in more reward tiers for that so that if I want to put in Lisa Simpson, I <laughs> go to go to Patreon dot com slash whatever. Right. And then. Okay. And yeah, I mean, if there, I don't, I haven't looked into Patreon very much. As I said, I, I really haven't, you know, pushed it very hard. But um, I, if if it allows one time rewards, I'll put, you know, I'll copy most of the Kickstarter rewards there. Otherwise, I'll set up a separate donation pool for people who want the Kickstarter rewards. But I will clarify as well: the game is not guaranteed to be done anytime soon without the Kickstarter succeeding. So, so let's see. Okay, so here's the final question. Okay. Okay. You've spent the better part of a decade working on this project, right? Yep. Uh, Back from 2013 all the way up until now, right? Yep. Probably started working on it before then. Uh, It's gone through many uh, different evolutionary dead ends and what have you. (laughs) And um, what, what about this project or universe or whatever makes it so worth all the effort you're putting into it what do you see in it what is its essence (laughs) well there's there's a couple things um first and foremost uh it's just um fantaria is kind of just because it was really easy to reuse my assets from tfg those three years of development like uh the chosen one himself is i made him for tfg and then i was just like okay well i'm gonna take the model and some of the animations and now he's in Fantaria. Um, so that's that's the big reason Fantaria is still tied to it. Um, but on top of that, I've always been intrigued by, you know, what makes the egg-like genre good. And I decided to sort of take what makes the egg-like good, or what makes egg-likes good, and just, you know, lift that from Lay Fantabulous game. And you end up with a first-person shooter collect-a-thon um, in this case. But like I just felt like the entire world in the in the case of TFG, the entire the surreal world made for a really interesting and really unique, I guess, world to add to the sphere of gaming. It's like there's the it's sort of the cartoony shell with the creepy interior. That's what's that's something I've always liked about it. So those two reasons combined are why I'm, you know, still making uh fantabulous stuff and Probably will for the foreseeable future because my I, one thing that's really in, like been on my mind a lot, especially the past year, is um, I would get together with friends once a week the past year to play Mario Party. I streamed those nights a couple times, um, and I want to make a, sort of like a board game styled or like a video game board game in the style of Mario Party for the PC, since that's just there's not any of those that are any good, and so. Fan, the fantabulous universe, the sort of, I, I don't know how you describe it, but just like the setting of Fantaria and Lay Fantabulous game would fit perfectly with that. So I'm probably going to be in the universe for a 
quite a bit lo- while longer between chapter one and then that. But point is, th- Man, those I are the reasons. You're, you're going to die three, uh, 300 years from now uh, working <laughs> on, uh, on Fantaria 8. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, I, I do want to move on eventually, but... There's there's still fun things to do with this universe, so. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let me see. So, I guess this is the part where we plug shit. So, obviously, <laughs> in the description, uh, there's going to be your Kickstarter, yep. your uh, Twitter, YouTube shit. Um, obviously. Um, oh! Soundtrack! Oh, Can right, of course, the soundtrack. the soundtrack. Yeah, no, the soundtrack is... Um, it's dope. It's amazing. Uh... It's, per, in my opinion, honestly, one of the highlights of the game, and it was made by the fabulous Viv, and I assume you'll have her SoundCloud and stuff down in the description. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's it's on the level of First Suite in E flat by Gustav Holst. So oh my God. if you know what if you know what I'm saying, it's it's up there. Are you familiar with Gustav Holst? I can't say I am. No. Oh wow. <laughs> Millennials these days, geez. Yeah, I can, uh, I'll show. It's, it's, it's the peak of, of, of musical perfection. Gotcha. So, it's high praise. <laughs> and and I mean, so, Viv deserves it. So, Fantaria is the Gustav Holst of video games. <laughs> I don't know who that is. So for all I know, you're insulting me right now. <laughs> He's, you know, Gustav Holst, formerly known as Pink Floyd. Oh wait, what? No, that's no? not true. I, I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm I'm very lost right now. This interview is going off the rails. <laughs> just, I'm just making shit up. <laughs> it sounds like it. I was... That's 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 it's an inside joke. Okay. Point is, uh, soundtrack is great. Uh, there will be a link to it, and you can see it on Bandcamp too. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure make sure to to, to uh, contribute to the Kickstarter so we can get Lisa Simpson into the video game and get the video game out. Period, <laughs> as well. Well, I mean, well, you know I, what I, I mean. Think it's more, you know, we gotta focus on what's more important. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um. Anyway, it has. Uh, th- it was good to get a lot of this stuff out there. A lot of these questions about the game answered, especially in regards to the egg-like situation. Because that has been haunting me. Okay, dope. Let's end this before I go on for another two hours.